Thank you. I want to thank my colleagues, Governor Burgum, Congressman Mills, and Congressman Donalds for laying out the political backdrop here. This is a politicized persecution that is nakedly apparent. What I want to do is dive a little bit deeper into what we actually learned today in that courtroom. What do we see in there? First of all, I learned a lot from being in there in person. It is one of the most depressing places I have been in my life, but it is fitting because the only thing more depressing than the environment of that courtroom is what's actually happening in there. It's straight out of a Kafka novel. The prosecution's main strategy appears to be to bore the jurors into submission. And if you look in that direction, sadly, it may appear to actually be working. Now, I would like for anybody, anybody here in the press, anybody at home, anybody in MSNBC or the media afterwards, to clearly state what exactly is the crime that Donald Trump committed. Oh, wait. We have not heard a good answer to that question. It has been vague until today. You heard Michael Cohen's testimony, after which I would say it is less clear than ever what that crime actually was. They'll say falsifying business records. Well, let's look at who did we learn falsified business records today? Yet, what, hour, two hours felt like it could have been seven hours of Michael Cohen talking about how he falsified business records. Okay, so you have a guy who has been a perjurer in the past that is now saying he falsified business records. What is the crime that Donald Trump committed? Now, it appears to be what they might allege is some sort of bookkeeping error or whatever. The real bookkeeping that we need accounting of is Judge Merchant's own family member collecting millions of dollars as a Democratic operative using the existence of this trial as a fundraising ploy for Democrats. This is unconscionable. Imagine if the same shoe fit the other foot. Imagine if it was Joe Biden that was on trial. You had a Republican judge whose son was collecting millions of dollars as a Republican operative. What would you all be saying? This would not be justice. This is injustice at its worst. So let's let's go even a layer deeper, right? Because well, let's go let's go even a layer deeper. Actually, the alleged crime here is supposedly they try to point to this every day that he does not actually use campaign funds, that he used personal funds. Well, let's get this straight. Suppose Donald Trump had used campaign funds to make a personal expense. They'd be going after him for that. So if they're going to get him going or they're going to get him coming, that is the best proof that this is a politicized sham. Let's go through it piece by piece. If you tell somebody to go buy you a suit and you want to look good on television because that'll affect the voters, the way voters vote for you, you know what? They prosecute politicians if they use campaign funds to buy a suit. If they say, go get a haircut, if you use campaign funds to get a haircut because you want to look good to the voters, they will actually prosecute you for using campaign funds for a personal expense. Yet the entire legal theory of this case, the whole case that Alvin Bragg has brought depends on one premise for them to charge this as a felony, is that Donald Trump somehow should have used campaign funds to make an allegedly personal payment. Yet if he had done that, their case against him would be even stronger. This is garbage. That is the best proof that you have, that if they're going to get him Cohen or get him coming, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. This is a sham. This is not the United States of America. This is some third-rate banana republic. If this were happening in another country, we would be laughing at them as a sham democracy. I am ashamed as an American citizen to sit here in a courtroom watching the former leader of the free world, and let's be honest, likely next leader of the free world, sitting with the indignity in this dingy third-rate courtroom with fourth-rate fourth rate prosecutors and a fifth-rate lawyer on the stand as a witness who actually is violating attorney-client privilege left and right. Nobody's even talking about that. So this is a shame, shame on the spirit in our country's history, but we will get through it and be stronger because you know who ultimately actually cast the vote on this case? It's not just the jurors in that jury box. It's every one of you at home. It's every American who votes this November to say no to the weaponization of justice. And if you're at home, you may say, you know what, I don't agree with everything Donald Trump's ever said. You know what, I may not agree with some of his policies even, even though they were great policies for four years. But you do agree, whether you are Democrat or Republican or black or white or gay or straight or man or woman, that our justice system should be blind to politics. That regardless of whether your last name is Biden or Trump, regardless of whether you've been a politician or not, you get a fair shake in our own legal system. And when you have a prosecutor who campaign on the pledge of going after Trump and then keeps his campaign pledge, when you have a judge whose kids are collecting money from Democratic operatives by fundraising off the very trial that that judge is presiding over and then telling the U.S. president that he's subject to a gag order, that he can't talk about it, that is not justice. That is a bastardization of what this country was founded on. And I'm here 
And all of us are here as friends of Donald Trump, supporting him in our personal capacity, sharing our opinions. That's why we're here today. But I hope every American at home who isn't able to be in that courtroom is able to see what's actually happening there. And when you do, we will have a landslide of historic proportion this November if every American understands the injustice that's playing out in that courtroom today. So may God bless our country. I pray for our future. And let's pray for our country being stronger on the other side of this disgusting sham politician prosecution. Doug, we're going to close this out. Thank you. Vivek Ramaswamy is a homie. He is the kind of friend that you need when you run into trouble or when you're at court and all the fakes homie didn't show up. Vivek Ramaswamy was there to support our former president, Donald Trump, for the hush money case against Stormy Daniels. So what is going on with this hush money case? Let me bring everyone up to date. So uh, some, a summary of this case, uh, the Donald Trump hush money case centers around allegations that Trump, while running for president in 2016, directed his then lawyer, Michael Cohen, to pay 130000 in hush money to adult film store star Stormy Daniels to prevent her from publicly disclosing an alleged sexual encounter with Trump. Hmm, interesting. Because to my knowledge, Stormy Daniels came out publicly and stated or released two statements. This one and this one saying that there was nothing sexual abuse, assault, uh, encounter. All this is made up. She stated this. So why is she coming out to, you know, cause a stir? Coming out because, you know, she got paid by the far left to defame a potential president candidate or potential president for 2024 let me know in the comment section do you trust our president our former president donald trump more than you trust uh stormy daniels or you don't trust either one of them well let me know because this is a good conversation to have and just by looking at this case they're not gonna able to convict uh, donald trump because what he did or actually he didn't do it uh uh michael cohen did and what they tried to charge him for it's not gonna stand because what what they doing is not a felony, you know. Um, you can twist it however you want. That that Soros paid, you know, uh, DA uh, Alvin Bragg. Dude, he the charges he brought onto this case is is when I read it, I, I, I it just it just gave me a headache. It's clearly a political agenda. It's clearly why is it so hard for people just to wake up like. Let me share with you, you know, I, I am, I was never a Donald Trump supporter until 2020 because when I found out, when I read, when I dug and I saw that an election was stolen, yes, the election was stolen. 81 million votes for Joe Biden. That is the biggest crime against United States of America. Just look at any of Joe Biden rallies. He barely have a hundred people attending. Look at any uh, rallies right now from our former president Donald Trump. Thousands, thousands of people. And they all have something in common. Family. Want to better our country. Close the darn border. Bring values back to family. How do I know this? Because when I, when our former president Donald Trump visited Las Vegas, I was at the school that he was doing a rally and I didn't even know about it. And I talked to people there and they all shared with me the same value, the same thing they want for their kids, the same thing they want for their country. And these are all different families. And they all came for our former president, Donald Trump. When I saw that, my mind blew up. Because what legacy media is trying to paint a picture of Donald Trump, that's not what I saw. That's not what I experienced. So that's why my belief that he's going to be our president for 2024 went up. 
But back to this case, you guys, you have to wait, really wake up because what they're doing to our former president Donald Trump is a thousand percent a political agenda. This is some commonest shit because you know you can't win playing a fair game. So therefore, you're going to do everything and anything to derail him from gaining more popularity. But the crazy thing here is comedy now because they're trying so hard that they are exposing themselves. It's even my four fourth grader son, soon to be fourth grader, can clearly see it. And he does not support anybody. He just watched the speech and then he watched how legacy media are trying to paint a picture. And he said, wait, legacy media's lying, daddy. I, we saw his speech. He didn't say anything what they're telling me. Why are they doing this to him? That's crazy. Even a fourth grader can understand that. I'm like, now you know, my son, legacy media, West propaganda are a bunch of BS. We have to wake up because what the left and the Democrat Party are doing to Donald Trump right now is only going to get worse once they're after the middle class. Just imagine that. Donald Trump is powerful. He got money and he saw the agenda, the deep state, the elite playbook. And he tried to warn us about it and he talked too much. Mean tweet, owie, owie. And because of all that, they don't want it. They don't want the, the truth to get exposed. But the biggest wave is coming this November. And I'm telling you now, villagers, this hush money case will not get anywhere. And Donald Trump will not get convicted for it because what he did or what his lawyer did, it's actually a, not a crime. You know, he, he, Donald Trump didn't even know about this. But what's crazy is that Stormy Daniels came out publicly and released two statements saying that Donald Trump did not do anything wrong then, then why is she backtracking her words now? Simply because now she's getting some kind of funding, monetary reasons from maybe somebody else that we're not aware of. But if you ask me who I trust, if it's up two options, Stormy Daniels or our former president Donald Trump, I'll pick Donald Trump 10 out of 10 any day because the truth come out first and then the lies. Stormy Daniel came out publicly and said Donald Trump did not do anything wrong toward me sexually. And now she's backtracking. She said, oh, we, we, we. No, he did something. That's why he's paying me money to keep my mouth hushed. Well, the public eyes are open. You, my villagers, let me know in the comment section. What do you think this case will turn out? How? Is Donald Trump innocent or is he guilty? You know where my take is. Because I read the case, just like how I read the New York case and how I read the uh, that lady, that crazy Carol lady case. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to talk about that because YouTube is going to cancel me for that once I tell you the truth. But this hush money case will not go anywhere. It's just another uh, political agenda to derail Donald Trump. He should be campaigning sharing to America his policies, his foreign policies, closing the border, making America great again, but instead he had to go to court. And thanks to Vivek Ramaswamy for being a homie, backing him up. Because it sucks when you are going through court, going to cases, knowing that you're not a criminal, it can drain a person mentally and physically. And that's what they're doing to our former President Donald Trump. And if you think that is... Uh, um, okay, you are part of the problem. And trust me, they're not after Donald Trump. They're after you. Because what they do to him, what makes you think that they won't do it to you? You're a little shrimp. I'm a little shrimp. Very small. They're going to step on me and throw me in jail and no one give a shit about me. Wake up, my villagers. Be a free thinker. Because if what they do to Donald Trump right now, what make you think they won't do it to you? So with that, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you so much for having our president, our ex-president or former president back because, you know, when you look to your left, you look to your right, 
um, and you're by yourself at court, uh, it could get very lonely. And this is from personal experience. That's why real homies always show up on their homie court date because that support is needed. They may not say thank you, but I'm 100% sure when pre our former President Donald Trump looked to his right shoulder and he saw Vivek Ramaswamy sitting there, it feels hella good. It feels really good because if I felt good when I go to court and see my homies show up for my court date, you know, it, it, it gives you a, a, a warm feeling in your heart Say, hey man, you know, I know I didn't do shit. I know I'm innocent, but they dragged me into this bullshit case but now I know who my real homies are, who my real supporters are, and I want to do everything I can to make sure we win this case and take back our country this coming November. And that's pretty much it for my two cents about this bullshit hush money case. But let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think of Vivek Ramaswamy? Uh, is what he's doing, uh, is he a real person? Is he fake? Do you like him? Do you hate him? Well, let me know because a lot of people have mixed feelings toward Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, me, personally, I like the guy. I like the way he simplified things. I like the way he keep it 100. He doesn't sugarcoat anything and because that's special. Politicians love to sugarcoat everything and anything for their mega donor. Not Vivek Ramaswamy. Before I let you go, villagers, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. And most importantly, we have to take care of our health. Until next time.